Hi, it's Julie. Welcome to Chicory's Travels. One of the things that I absolutely love to do, whether we're traveling in the RV or whether I'm at home, is to go hiking. And today I want to share with you my favorite tool for hiking. This tool, All Trails, allows me to find great hiking trails, to read reviews, to get tips on them. I'm also going to show you how I can analyze a trail and see if it's in, within my capability. And finally, it also allows me to navigate while I'm out there on the trail as well so that I don't get lost. And I'm going to teach you all the little tricks that I've learned how to use it both on my phone and on the computer. So let's start with the phone. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the actual app, All Trails, and just pull it up. Now, the great thing about having it on my phone is that anywhere I'm at, as long as I have cell signal, I can just go in here and find a nearby trail. And you can just click nearby and it'll actually look in your area. And there's a couple of different ways that you can look at it. First, you can just scroll through what comes up list view. You can set filters. And the filters will let you do things like, obviously, I don't feel like hiking 100 miles, so I could come down and say five miles or less. Um, elevation gain, same thing. I don't want to do 10,000, so maybe I'll take it to around 1,500 feet. You can go by rating, activities. I'm looking for hiking, obviously. If you wanted a waterfall view, um, if it's kid friendly, dog friendly, that's called suitability. You can look for the route type. So do you want it to be a loop? Some people don't like doing out and back where you go just straight there and straight back. Although I do like those kind of hikes because I feel like they look different in the different directions. Point to point might be where you park a car at one end and a car at other, another end. People also call those shuttle hikes. Okay, and then what you're going to do is hit see trails and now again it shows it to you in a list view and you'll notice that some of mine have a little purple up in the top that says verify completed that means i have done that hike and i'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment but i do want to show you another view and that's this button in the top right this lets you do it uh, in a map view so the blue dot shows you where i'm at right now and then the green dots are where there are hikes. And then this one that has a um, 13, there's a bunch of hikes in there because that is a state park near me. So you can zoom in or out of your screen. So here you can see, or you can zoom out. Now let's just pick one. I'm just gonna pick this one so you can see what it's like. And it says Manassas Gap. Now, when you click on it, it's gonna give you even more information. And this one says moderate. Now I don't necessarily go by that because you don't really know what their guidelines are. What I do is I look at things like how far it is and what the elevation is. So here you see the length is five miles and it's 1,108 feet of elevation. It's out and back. They give you a very generic um, description. This description seems almost the exact same for every hike in my area. But you can also um, see the weather down here. We'll look on the map in just a minute. But this is the other thing that I like. You can look at reviews. So you can read reviews of people who have actually done it. And so it, like this one tells you that it's steep in some places, that there were a lot of leaves. And sometimes in here, there's tips about like the parking area. So this one tells you they highly recommend because the parking area is a pretty good size. Um, they felt like it was steady uphill until you reach the gap. So you can go through those. And then you can also look at photos that people have taken on that trail. Now, if you look at the full map, this is what I really like to do because this really gives me an idea of capability. When it talks about elevation, it's specifically elevation gain, okay? So now if you look at this, you'll see we start at the bottom left and you see where you start and it shows you on the 
the map, if you just put your finger and move it, it's telling you like this is the elevation at the starting point, 951 feet. And then looking across the bottom, this peak here is at the two mile mark. We're up to 1,760 feet. So that would let you know. And then you also see the grade there as well. So it lets you know how steep it is. Then you see you come down a little bit and then you go back up and then you go all the way back down. And this is the full hike. So what this is telling you is in a five mile hike at the two and a half mile mark, this is about where you turn around. So you see how you've come down a little bit. So now you're gonna go up and then obviously you're just doing the reverse. So I really like that. Um, and you can do this on the computer as well. And I will show you that in just a minute. But while we're on the app, I wanna show you another thing that you can do. Now, remember I said you had to have cellular service for this, but the great thing here is also there's a little arrow in the bottom button and you see it's pointing down. This is the download area. I can download this map when I have service. So that way when I'm out hiking, and this happens to me a lot if I'm hiking like in the national park or something, there might not be good service. So I will download the map while I'm in an area with service. And there's all different types of maps that you can download. I just do the basic all trails. I push the button and then what's gonna happen is it is gonna actually download the map. And the great thing about that is if I lose service anywhere on my hike or even don't have service at the start of my hike when I get to the hiking location, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because now that map has been downloaded to my phone and even without service, the GPS works and it shows me how I'm moving along the trail, which is really cool. So now that I have that map downloaded, I can close out of there. Now, another great thing that I can do when I'm on this trail here, um, trying to find how to get there is I can share it by pushing that button. And what it's gonna allow me to do is text it or email it to someone. So if I wanna tell one of my friends, meet me at this trailhead, they'll get it. And then what we can both do is click this button for directions. So you can open it in your Apple Maps, Google Maps, or even just copy it to clipboard. So that's really cool. And it'll help you find the directions. And then that map that you downloaded is right here, my map. And another thing that you can do once you're at the trailhead is that you can record. And the great thing about that is that that is what is gonna, um, that is what is gonna allow you to see like how long it took you to actually do that trail. And I will show you a recording that I had to, to show you exactly what I mean by that. So that's really cool also, but you don't wanna hit record until you're actually at the location. Because if you see now my blue dot is not on that red line, the red line is the map. So it's not very helpful if I'm starting recording now, because then when I drive there, however many miles away it is, it's gonna add to my hike and I'm not really hiking. So don't hit record until you actually get there. So say you have closed your app and you get to the destination and now you wanna pull it up and you don't have cell service anymore. What you do is you just come over here to plan and this is where all of your downloaded maps are. So if you had marked something by favorites, that would be there. If you made lists like I do for different parks and bucket list hikes, but then there's one for maps. And this is where your downloaded maps are. And you just come right in here. You find that it's downloaded because that arrow is green. You click on it and then it'll actually give you guidance. Now, if I were there right now, what you would see is on top of this green and black dot, which is your starting and ending spot, it would also have a blue dot, which is telling you that I'm there. And as I start moving, the blue dot goes along the line. And so you just use that map as you're going and you look down and you should be able to track your blue dot going along the full length of the hiking trail. Now, another thing that you can do if you're at the location and you don't have that other thing pulled up and you wanna record is you see record is down here at the bottom. So you could record from there and you could load the map. So you could pull in any map that you have. 
And right now, this is the one that I have downloaded. But the nice thing about that is that way you can have the map to be able to make sure that you're on track, but also at the same time, you can be recording it so that when you go back later in your history, so let me show you that now. This was a little short, um, let's look at this one. This was a little short 2.1 mile hike that I did this morning. I didn't take any photos. That's why there's not any photos there, but now I can see splits. So I did a little flat one this morning just to get a little warm up. And I can come here and I can see my splits now. And I can see like my first mile was 18 minutes and 38 seconds. My second mile was 17. And then I finished out that it didn't take me 20 minutes to do 2.1. That That's what's a little crazy about this. It's actually only 0.1. So it took me 20 minutes and 31 seconds to do that second 1.1 mile. That's what that last thing shows. And it shows you the elevation gain. And you can do this for any of your history. So it's really cool. So you could see like a hike I did. Let's see, let's find a good one. So here was an 8.2 mile hike that I did. It was 1,453 elevation gain. Now, another cool thing about this is the recording. It showed me the moving time and total time. Sometimes there's a big difference um, because we might take a long break. And then you could see splits. And so it basically shows you for every mile what your pace was and what your elevation gain was. So that's what I really like using it on my phone for. Again, explore, helps me find trails. Plan is where my downloaded maps are when I get to my location. Record is so I can actually record it and I will click that button to load a map if I have one downloaded. History lets me see those uh, previous hikes that I've done. And profile tells you like your total stats. So this is really cool because you can see I got this app in July and September was my uh, most hikes. I hiked over 120 miles in the month of September. So, so far in this month, it is the 11th, I think today or the 12th. And I'm at uh, what, getting close to 40 miles for the month. It also um, shows you like your personal best and things like that. So it's pretty cool. The stats are kind of fun to look at, um, but I don't really, I, that's not the primary reason why I have it, but it is pretty cool to be able to look back at that and see like what's your longest distance, what's your most elevation gain, your most moving time, your most calories burned, um, things like that. So now let's look at my computer screen and I'll show you another really cool feature in case you don't find a trail in all trails that you want to hike, but you know that a trail must exist. So I am going to share my screen and I'm going to show you what I do. Um, you can do some of these things on your phone, but this part gets tricky because what I'm going to do is really zoom in and draw a trail. And that way I'm going to create my own custom map. So say I'm going to, I'm looking for Sky Meadows. That was what I showed you earlier. Sky Meadows State Park in Virginia. It tells you the best trails. It's the same program. If you buy the app, you also have this on the computer. But it, it'll show you all the different trails. Okay, so you could click on here and you could see what the trails are. And then again, over here on the left, it's gonna show you um, what, they, what their rating is, but also like total mileage, what they estimate the time is. If you click on it, now it's gonna tell you the total elevation. It's gonna show you a map over here. It's gonna show you the total elevation. You can zoom in and out. And then if you scroll down here, this is what I showed you on the phone also. So you're starting at 866, 886 feet. The grade is 29%. And you can see that the first 
2.4 miles of the hike is pretty much uphill using this map. And it's getting you up to your total elevation gain, which this tells you it is 1,023 feet total. And this is a loop. But the other neat thing about this is this is this red part is the actual hike itself. So as you're draw, dragging it along here, you can see up on that map where the blue dot is going. That's what I was talking about on the phone. Your blue dot shows you moving. And so if you were using it on the, on the phone when you're navigating, that's what it would look like. The blue dot would be moving along. Now, another thing that you can see here though is that these dotted lines in here that aren't red, these are other trails at Sky Meadows. So what if you wanted to go on one of those trails and you couldn't find this preloaded map? Well, this is what I really love doing on my computer. I come over here to plan and I say, create map. Now what this is gonna do is it is actually gonna let me draw a map. So I'm gonna find where I wanna go. And I'm gonna zoom in. So we're gonna pick Sky Meadows again, just for this example, same state park. And that is right here, Sky Meadows State Park, okay? And here are all these different trails. Now, here's a really cool thing. I know that there is a parking area right here. And so I could actually create a hike coming into Sky Meadows from here if I wanted to. And that wasn't something that I found on all trails. So what I'm gonna do is just click draw route. You can pick your color. I'll just leave it as red. And now what happens when I click to where I know that there's a parking area right here and I'm on the trail, it won't let me do this off of the trail. Everywhere I click, it starts drawing my map. And you see over here on the left, right now I'm at 0.26 is my distance, 161 elevation feet, uh, feet of elevation gain. Now, by the time I get here, I'm up to 407 feet of elevation gain. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit and say, hmm, what do I want to do? Well, let's see what happens if I make a big loop here. So I'm just going to click. I don't have to actually draw. And you see how it's added. So I'm at 2.39 miles and 709 feet of elevation gain. So now when I get to this juncture, I wanna come up here. So I'm gonna do that. And then say, I'm going to come back. And now I know I just wanna get back to my car, right? So I could just keep clicking or I can say close loop. And once I do that, it automatically closed the loop. And that hike is 4.93 miles and 886 feet of elevation gain. Now, what if I said, no, nah, I want it to be a little bit more. I don't want to do that route. I can go back to here. And now I'm still in this map. And I say, well, what if I add this other trail? You see how when I click now, it's automatically filling in because it knows that's the quickest route. And then once I get here, now I'm gonna go close loop. Now that, my, that loop is 6.43 miles for 1,335 feet of elevation gain. And I'm like, okay, this is the map that I wanna save. So now what I would just come down here is I will name my map and I will call it Ashby Gap since that's where it was saying I'm parking to Sky Meadows. And I could add other notes. So say I wanted to put the actual name of the trails. Now here's another really cool thing about this. If you zoom in, it'll tell you the trail name. So look, that was the Appalachian Trail. And then when I came up here, it was called the Old Trail. And I'm just moving my cursor along looking. 
to see if it changes the name. It's still the old trail, but now I'm going to North Ridge. So I'm gonna just put that in the notes. You don't have to, but say, I will. I'll go AT to Old Trail to North Ridge Trail. And, and this is only if you want to, you totally don't have to. Now you see that it's still North Ridge Trail, North Ridge Trail. Oh, and this is called Ambassador White House Trail. I like to do this just because um, as I'm hiking, there'll be like trail markers and stuff. And it just, even though I have a map, gives me an extra um, little added comfort to know, yeah, I'm actually on the trail I'm supposed to be. Now here's another cool feature. You see there's an overlook there. White House Overlook. So I know I'm going to be seeing a cool overlook. And now I come up and go on the AT. And it's the AT that's going to be back to my car. So whatever you want to put, you totally put that in there. You can make it private if you want. You can add waypoints if you want. And I'm just going to say save the map. Now I can share the map. I can download it. I can get directions. So again, I can get directions to the actual starting point. But this is on my computer, not on my phone. And I'm actually going to be using the navigation on my phone. So all I'm going to do right now is maybe if I want someone to join me, I'll click share map and it'll allow me to copy the link, send a text, an email, or even to embed it in a website. And now what I can do is I can pull up my phone and remember where I showed you to find your maps in the history? That map is gonna be there now. Ashby Gap to Sky Meadows. And I really love using that function of creating maps because many times I'll want to do something different or maybe I'll wanna to cobble together a couple of different trails. Uh, maybe it's a place I've already been before. Like you saw in Sky Meadows, there were a lot of different trails, but there's only a couple maps like already preloaded into all trails. And I'll wanna try a different route or put together instead of maybe the Northridge Trail, there's the Southridge Trail or I showed you there was a four mile option or a six mile option. I might wanna hike from inside the park instead of from outside the park. So it just gives me a lot of different options like that to be able to put together different trails. And the great thing about it is you can still see what all of your available options are. You can look at the elevation, you can look at the total distance and really create the one that is right for you. So I really hope this tutorial helped a little bit um, to just give you kind of like a beginners of what you can do with all trails. I do have the pro version, All Trails Pro. It's I think around $40 a year. Um, and it's to me totally worth it if you're gonna be doing a lot of hiking. There is still a lot of function that you can do in the um, non-pro version. I think maybe you might not be able to actually draw the map what I would recommend if you haven't ever used all trails before is to go ahead and get the free version. You'll totally be able to do the preloaded trails, try it out, see how you like it, see if it works for you. And then if you're enjoying it and you want to use the more advanced features like being able to draw your own custom maps, then go ahead and upgrade um, whenever they're having a sale and they have them a couple of times a year. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, just uh, put a comment uh, down below and let me know and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks and happy hiking.